Jennifer recently sat down with the Nevergalls to talk about the grieving process and to learn more about Deb's new book, A Heart Never Forgets. Deb and Dar Nevergal are here with us today and we're going to talk about um, how God is using a very, very difficult situation and probably helping others now because of that. Deb Williams Nevergal is the author of A Heart Never Forgets, very touching book. Let's go ahead and get started. Tell me about this book and why you wrote it. I wrote A Heart Never Forgets to, first of all, help people, obviously. Um, I was inspired by an Aspiring Voices contest through guideposts, and um, I wanted to write it. I wanted to write my story, but to write it in a more creative form. So, um, well, let's talk a little bit. From there. Let's talk a little bit about your story. Your daughter, Alyssa, uh, 19 mm -hmm. years old, back right. in 1998, passed away in a car accident. Correct. Um, what from that would you like to share with us? Well, I just think, you know, it's one of those situations and, and it, like we said, it's the worst nightmare a parent can go through. And at the night, actually we were at a birthday party that night uh, for one of our cousin, one of Alyssa's cousins. And niece. then when the police officers show up at your door early in the morning and they were carrying her purse that was, you know, at that point, nothing need to be said we we knew right then you know no what, words were necessary and, yeah so yeah it's it's just you know from there you just you know one day at a time one breath at a time so here that's 1998 you know for the person who is just sitting watching this thinks oh that's that's a decade ago that's a couple decades Correct. ago almost but to you and to the people who loved Alyssa, it probably right. feels just like yesterday right yesterday and a lifetime ago you know you never get over the loss of a child and somebody who's never gone through that most likely won't understand. Um, and people in our shoes obviously do. Um, and that's why I'm trying to encourage um, people reading this, that what they're feeling is normal. Um, and also people who have never gone through it that, you know, to un try to understand, give them understanding of how it really is for us. You know, to be more empathetic to people in their own lives who have lost loved ones and to be um, compassionate. You know, so many people expect you to get over it and they mm -hmm. give you a time frame. And I talk mm -hmm. about that, you know, where, um, you know, it's, there's no time frame for, for grief, you know, yeah. you, you, it's just always there. So the book, when I started reading the book, I was surprised at the beginning because mm -hmm. um, it wasn't what I expected. It starts with a story. Correct. A really wonderful, heartwarming story about elephants. Right. Why did you pick elephants? Um, elephants never forget, first of all. Um, and I, when, when I started writing this, I thought I would write a short story like they have in guideposts. And then when I read the guidelines and realized you had to have 10,000 words, I thought, where am I going to find 10,000 words? I ended up coming up with 14,000, <laughs> which was miraculous. Um, but and there were there were things I could have put in and didn't. I wanted it, it to be not so much detail about Alyssa, but how to overcome from a perspective of overcomer rather than someone who is overcome. And um, the elephants just kind of morphed. Um, I started out with the kitty um, story. It actually happened. Um, our daughter uh, lost a kitty, Jessica. And we buried it under the apple tree. And I wrote a poem. I, I wrote a lot of song lyrics back then and poetry. And um, so I, for whatever reason, just kind of started out that way. And it merged into the elephant story. I was, um, sometime before that, I came up with a song out of nowhere, uh, The Road is a Weary Traveler. And I include that in here. And I told him, I said, I hear some like horses clip clop, clip clop. <laughs> And I said, maybe I'm going to write this for a spaghetti western. I, did, I had no idea, <laughs> but it was perfect for this story. And it, you know, kind of just worked out from there. A couple of things I really like about this book. First of all, it's not super long. Right. No. So I don't think anybody would sit down and go, I can't read this. So it's something that could really reach people because it's right. readable. It's, it's, it's by design, it, um, you know, caters to those who can't digest a large volume of words. A person who newly bereaved, you know, they're not going to take sit down and read a large novel. 
in the short chapters for the same reason. They can pick it up and put it down and pick it up later and resume. The other thing I like about this, um, I love the fact that you do start in a story form, so I think it's very inviting. It brings anybody in who wants to read it, but then you move into not just talking about what you've gone through, but I think you've written it in a way that can impact anybody who's also gone through loss or difficulty. Correct. I mean, I think that this, this definitely is a book that could definitely help all kinds of situations, all kinds of people. I pets, imagine that was your hope parents, as well. Parents, correct. Yeah. You know, the loss of, you know, we love our pets, and, and I address that, and um, like I said, I didn't really plan to write it that way, but I wanted to kind of ease in, like you said, it, it's a it's a deep story, losing a child. I didn't want to just go right into that, so. Um, in the book, you talk about how you started writing after Alyssa passed away, right. and it was, was it a form of release? Yes. What, what have been some of the things that God has used to help you through this time? Um, I started writing in 94 um, t to get through a bout a, you know, of depression, um, some frustrations in my life, trying to work that through. And I did it in um, word form. I'm a word person. Mm -hmm. And um, it's therapeutic. You know, paper is cheap and a good listener. I quote that here in my book. Um, it's just, it's, it works for me. I want to r just read a couple things that you have written. This was from an email that actually they shared with us before this, but Deb, you say, God will sustain us when we cling to him. Losing a child is a parent's worst nightmare and the most devastating and life-altering circumstance will ever endure. But again, we want to stress how God will sustain us when we cling to him. What are some scripture verses that God has brought I wrote you. them down. Um, the the two scriptures that really minister to me in my grief um, would be uh, Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and save the crush, saves the crushed in spirit. Um, and Psalms 56, 8, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. And that one's big to me, just knowing that he cares about my tears and that he actually you know, records them. Like he knows the number of my tears, like he knows the number of the hairs on my head. It's just a big comfort to me. So on that day when you had yes. the officers show up, on that moment, mm -hmm. yet you still had God wrapping his arms exactly. around you. Right. And has been there ever since exactly. then. Exactly, he's very near. What, what strong words those are for so many situations. I mean, that could be applied to so many situations in life. And yet here, situation that you never dreamed of, no. you never right. wanted. Still to right. this day, you wish never happened. Yeah. But yet, we've got something like this that is not just a healing tool for you, but I believe this is gonna be a healing tool for other people as well. That's the hope. Yeah. Yeah. How can people get a hold of this book? How can they find it? They can um, email us or text or um, get us through our webpage and it's on the back of the book. If and you, we've got, we've got it on the screen right there as well, debwilliamsnevergall.com. They can email us um, through forever19adw at gmail.com. All right, so we've got the email, we've got the website, and of course you can call us here at TV44 if you have any questions, want to know how you can get a copy of this book, or want to know how you can get a hold of Deb Williams Nevergall. Um, do you speak at events? Do you go around to other places? Small um, so far, but um, I'm scheduled to do a larger crowd. Um, it's a Relay for Life coming up um, with maybe 200 people, so I... Um, I'm up for that. All right. Mm -hmm. I know God will give you the strength yeah. to do it. If he gave you the strength to write this, right. he definitely has a purpose and a plan. Right. All right. Dar and Deb One never One step go. at a time. We're so thankful for you sharing this journey, sharing this healing journey, and uh, allowing God to take the pain you've suffered, but use it to be a blessing to other right. people around you. And for his good, for his Absolutely. glory. All right, again, that website is debwilliamsnevergall.com, and you can call us here at TV44 if you have any questions. Don't forget, you can also always call our prayer line, 339-3000, or email us, prayer at wtlw.com. We're here to pray for you. We care about the situations in your life. Back to you.